Are you interested in living in Boise, Idaho? Do you want to know what some of the pros and cons are? Well, I think it's a great place to live with some really awesome things to do, but every place has pros and cons. So let's get real. Hi, I'm Charlotte with Birch and Cedar Realty Group. Okay, so you're interested in learning a little bit more about living in Boise and what some of the pros and cons are about living in the Boise area. Well, I'm gonna start with the cons, mostly because I believe the pros outweigh the cons by a landslide. That's right, the Boise area is experiencing tremendous growth and they have for years. They're no longer a hidden gem. People know about how amazing it is to live here, so people are flocking to the area. So because of this growth, we are seeing significant traffic. So if you need to commute during off-peak hours and you're coming from, say, Eagle or further down Interstate 84, and you're coming during those off-peak hours, the commute's pretty reasonable. But if you need to commute into downtown in peak hours, your commute's probably, probably going to increase significantly. Depending on what area you come from, it's gonna be a minimum 30 minute commute on up. I came from California and my commute in Southern California was two to two and a half hours each way. So it's nothing like that. I know Seattle has some significant commute times as well. Just keep in mind, it's probably nothing like any of those cities, but it's still, if you're not used to it, it can be significant. Keep in mind that while your previous commute might be nothing like the current commute that you'll have here, we are still growing and with growth comes traffic. So in addition to the traffic issues, there's also a lot of construction all over the valley. We're growing quite a bit and because of that, there's a lot of construction going on everywhere. You're gonna see significant construction downtown, which is gonna affect your commute no matter what time you come downtown. They do a pretty good job about dealing with construction and off hours and also rerouting people around the construction as best they can. But again, we're growing, so along with traffic, we're gonna have a lot of construction. If you're coming from a larger city with a really well-run public transit system, you're gonna find the transit system here severely lacking. They typically want run from 5.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. on weekdays and only some routes run on Saturday. I have a more in-depth video on inversions and you can find that here. The basic gist is that because of topography and weather patterns, there are some areas, for example, the Treasure Valley, that are more likely to experience inversions than others. Normally, hot air rises and cold air sinks, and this process of mixing is called convection. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you'll get a thermal inversion. And what that is, is where the warm air sits on top of the cold air, trapping it and all of the pollution from cars, fires, industry, things like that, underneath. There's no mixture of air. If the inversion lasts for several days, the buildup can be quite significant. So if you lived in Southern California and you dealt with the smog, it's kind of like that. Only when an inversion sticks around for long periods of time and builds up, it's much, much worse. It, the air quality gets to a point where you actually can't see the sun, or at least not very well, and it's like having ground fog all day long. This one's near and dear to my heart. I love my in and out But while every so often there is a rumor that they're coming, they've said repeatedly that they have no plans on coming to Idaho in the near future. So, maybe one day. Okay, on to the positives. One of my first experiences when I moved here was going into the grocery store and walking the produce aisle and having the produce guy look me in the eye and say, hi, how's your day? With a big smile on his face. And I remember looking around thinking he must be talking to somebody else because that didn't happen in California. But he was talking to me. People are friendly here. They smile, they wave, and they say hi. It's really nice. I wanted to add on here that there has been this belief that Idahoans don't welcome outsiders. And I don't believe that that is true. Now, while you're sure to find on Facebook or the internet that there's some negative feelings about people coming from California, I have not experienced any of that in person. Every person I've ever told that I'm from California has still welcomed me with open arms. So yes, while you're likely to see some crap on Facebook and probably a bumper sticker here and there, 
you're rarely actually gonna be confronted because you're from California. The bottom line is Idahoans are friendly and they welcome outsiders, despite what you may have heard on the internet. The Boise area truly has four seasons and they're pretty mild seasons at that. Spring has some really amazing weather and I'm a big fan of thunderstorms, so that's one of my favorite seasons. There's some pretty amazing rain and thunderstorms here. In spring, the average rainfall is about 5.73 inches. Summer can get warm. Typically for most of summer, it's gonna be low 90s. And as you come to the end of summer, there's usually a couple weeks that can be high 90s, maybe into 100, but most of summer is gonna be low 90s. Fall is gorgeous here. And usually you won't see those big drops in temperature until late fall. The average for fall, as far as temperature goes, is between 64 and 41 degrees, and the average rainfall is 2.68. Often you're gonna get a Halloween that's still a reasonable temperature. Winter here I find very interesting. The average temperatures um, range from 47 to 27 degrees Fahrenheit, and the average rainfall snowfall is about 5.14 inches. But I've been here when temperatures are like six degrees, and I know that that was a colder winter, but man, that's cold. And there's not a lot of snow to show for it. So what will happen is we'll get a snowstorm and then it will melt before the next snowstorm actually comes in. So if you're not a huge fan of snow shoveling, Idaho might be for you. Overall, the climate here is very mild and extremely enjoyable. Boise is surrounded by the outdoors and we have outdoor activities galore. We have hiking, biking, camping, fishing, hunting, rafting, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, skiing, snowboarding, uh, rock climbing, spelunking. Oh yeah, and surfing. Yes, I said surfing. There's a ton of parks and there's also the green belt, which is 25 miles of paved and dirt pathways for you to run, jog, bike, or even fish off of along the Boise River. During the summer, one of the more popular events is actually floating down the river. During winter, one of the more popular activities is to drive to McCall and see the McCall's Winter Carnival. You name it, we probably have it. We have a really eclectic, fun, and clean downtown. We have a lot of gourmet restaurants, some really cool, fun, funky stores, and a lot of craft breweries. If breweries are your thing, you're gonna find some really good ones here. A lot of the downtown restaurants, and a lot of the restaurants in general, have a real focus on the local food. Because of our area, we have a lot of farms around, and so they're able to get their food directly from the source. There's a real emphasis on food to table. There's also the Basque block. Did you know that Boise was home to the largest Basque community in the United States? A lot of the cities have farmer's markets. There's actually two that run in downtown Boise. One of the farmer's markets from downtown actually transitions into a closed space for later in the season. So they're actually able to stay open into December. So if you're less into the outdoors or just like art and music too, know we have that as well. There's the annual jazz and music festivals, the Idaho Shakespeare Festival, the Boise Philharmonic, we also have Ballet Idaho, as well as a bunch of um, museums and performing arts. We also have two summer-ish events called Art in the Park and Hyde Park Street Fair. And both of those, among other things, feature a lot of local artists. We also have Freak Alley in downtown. What started off as a single door expanded to a full alleyway with a lot of amazing art. It changes every couple of years and there's an application process to be a part of it, but it's really cool and when you're in the area, you should definitely check it out. While we don't have any professional teams, which could actually be a con for the area, we do have some really diehard fans for Boise State Broncos, Idaho Vandals, and the Idaho Steelheads. So if you are into sports, there are some local teams for you to support and become one of their diehard fans. Oh my word, I did not expect this when I moved here. The wines in this region are incredible. I'll put it this way, my opinion on this region, which includes Oregon and Washington wines as well, are that they are by far better than most California wines. The wines in the region are amazing and the wineries are super fun and laid back. 
you're gonna have a great time if you do go on the winery trail. In fact, I've included a link below for my free list of the wineries in the area. And if you email me directly, I'll send you my favorites. As far as breweries go, Idaho has a lengthy list and Boise hosts a lot of them. There's actually a town not too far outside of Boise by about 30 to 45 minutes called Wilder. And they have a 900 acre farm of hops. It's called Hopland USA. So if beer's your thing, you're likely to find an enjoyable brew here that suits your tastes. In fact, if you want a list of the Boise breweries, be sure to check out the link below in the description. The median home price for Boise has gone up 16% from last year, and that's pretty consistent for the last five years, uh, appreciating in the double digit value. Currently, the median home price for Boise is $357,000. The rising price has a lot to do with high demand and low supply along with the increase in supply prices for new home construction. In February 2020, new homes accounted for 42% of the home sales. So it has a pretty big impact on price. Despite these rising prices, we are still seeing that things and homes here are quite affordable. And that's in part due to the historically low interest rates right now. So while the affordability going down might slow down the growth here a little bit, we are still seeing that the affordability, when you take everything into account, is quite reasonable. Well, there you have it, my opinion on the pros and cons of the Boise area. I hope this was helpful. Like, subscribe, and click the little bell. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.